traders, Joseph here from ACAP. So, welcome to a new trading week. Uh, it's sort of continued on in some areas where we left off. So, we had further negative updates regarding uh, coronavirus over the weekend. Um, there's been spikes in infections in uh, Europe, primarily in Italy, uh, South Korea as well, uh, is having continuing to see the outbreak grow. And um, we saw some pretty interesting moves on Friday, so we'll get onto that in a moment. So we're just looking at Bitcoin now. So order of the morning has been gaps. We've seen quite a few gaps this morning uh, across currencies, and we can see the gap here in Bitcoin. So after a bit of a fight back, uh, buyers um, started uh, the week on a, on a, a weaker front uh, with a bit of a get with a good gap lower. So Bitcoin at the moment, I've got no idea what it's following, uh, what its influences are. And um, yeah, I've got no qualms admitting that being an analyst because at times you just don't know why markets move and there's um, nothing you can really do apart from uh, waiting and watching to see what happens next to try and get a, uh, a reading from price to um, get an idea of what the possible move might be. So yeah, I'm sorry if you found that a bit uh, confronting, but yeah, sometimes analysts don't know either. So now... Moving on to the Aussie, so the Aussie dollar started, we can see here, with uh, a very strong gap, but that was filled very quickly, um, which was a good sign, um, and we continue to see this rally hold. So, again, after some of the selling we've seen during the last uh, couple of periods, we just want to see if buyers can uh, basically back up that fight back that was posted on Friday, um, commit to a, a bit of a hold. Uh, but we really, this is Asian session trade, so we really need to see uh, how things go into the European and US sessions. Um, if we can finally say that we've seen a bit of a turning point, we'll a turning point just to hold and then a continued fight back locking in that low. Um, now, the euro was uh, a good one. Now, the ECB may have had something to do with this because with the way things are going virus-wise in Europe, you would have thought there'd been a bit of pressure on the euro, but the ECB did come out saying they're not going to change policy. And that really kick-started the euro last week. And uh, a pullback in the dollar on Fridays uh, continued to help this rally in the euro. So we've seen, you know, a gap higher this morning and we've seen a bit of a push higher, but uh, a little bit of a fade at the moment. So the euro's definitely uh, been ignoring a lot of uh, influences and just really, as you can see, powering higher. Now, this is what's made this uh, this virus outbreak so hard. It hasn't been a traditional sell-off. Like we've seen stocks in certain markets selling off, but then we've seen gold rallying and now gold selling off, and we've seen risk currencies falling to the end but rising to the USD, and then we've seen the USD stronger and they've been falling. It's been quite an interesting one, to put it uh, honestly. So we'll get on to the dollar cat in a moment. So... The pound uh, started like the Aussie with a gap lower and we've seen that fight back. And we saw the uh, dollar cat is seeing heavy selling again after a gap higher. And that was after that very strong fade we saw on uh, Friday. So um, dollar string is definitely a bit mixed. Now we're going to get onto gold because gold and uh, metals had an absolute uh, shocker on, uh, on Friday and it's quite strange because we've still seen stocks falling, gold's been rallying with falling stocks as a hedge against coronavirus but that all changed basically on the back on the 24th of the second where we saw that really strong fade and um, gold's never been able to come back from that so we saw that initial move down, we saw a test which failed and we saw Friday's whitewash so at one stage gold was trading you know, nearly 5% lower in the session. So we're talking, you know, $80 lower in the session. And we had a, a close lower of 57, uh, nearly, just up nearly close to $58 lower. Now, we had a weaker dollar, weaker stocks. You know, stocks still sold off to a degree. Um, so, and then gold has just totally been hit. So maybe this is a bit more than coronavirus again like with stocks we're starting to see markets that were heavily overbought with a lot of buyers in the market and a lot of stop losses just get start to get triggered and triggered and triggered and then snowballed into something a bit more special um it's probably what i can say is a plausible uh reason for this uh, because that kind of move especially under circumstances is a little bit a little bit odd 
to see panic selling like that. So, and this wasn't just confined to gold. We saw platinum and silver both come off uh, a lot harder than gold. Um, we're talking you know around six percent points. So we can just see here with silver, we can see that move, um, um, you know, unbelievable move, and then platinum as well. Another one that had a a, you know, a strong sell off uh, on Friday, and but platinum, you know, has been on a right down trend for a fair period of time now. Now one of Prime reasons for that is platinum's primarily used as an industrial metal. So, uh, when growth, production, manufacturing are all uh, hitting the skids, uh, it's not a surprise to see metals like platinum uh, and palladium as well. Um, would want to have a look at because um, both those are heavily uh, industrialized uh, metals and use a lot in other aspects, as is gold. But gold has a different function as well. It's also used as a hedge. Um, a lot of the time as well. So now just going to jump over to some of the stocks uh, this morning. Now the uh, ASX has uh, continued on where it left off. Um, this is like basically ruler straight that we can see now this uh, decline and um, basically from uh, the opening price back there, uh, we've now seen a, you know it's uh, to this point in the morning we're talking 12%, it's nearly 13%, which is quite remarkable uh, in terms of how rural straight that is. Now, the, there was some news out this morning that the Japanese government was going to uh, try and prop up the market uh, on this morning's open. Uh, the JPN's 225 so far is in the positive. Um, now, there is sort of a low coming in here. Um, there's no real uh, demand or uh, support area really to measure that off. Um, but keep an eye on it, it did have another big gap uh, lower in this, this sort of semi filling that gap. The Hong Kong 50 at this stage is from a technical point of view sort of you know holding at a low, uh, again we'll just have to give that some time to sort of confirm itself, uh, it's you know, far away just yet, it is holding at that low but yeah it is far from being confirmed as a support hold and um, over just to some of the uh, US futures so far this morning um, like we saw a higher close on Friday after that uh, you know another really strong move lower which was on the tail 3.29 percent and we've seen a uh, solid gap lower this morning so that market will need time just to work itself out and we'll see if uh, we do see any more buying uh, tonight. Now the Chinese data that came out on Saturday was the manufacturing and non-manufacturing uh, PMI data. It was the worst since 2008. Uh, it sort of answered some questions about how this virus is going in China and what it's doing so far to uh, economically in the country. Uh, a lot of people's thoughts were confirmed. It was horrible. And it also added to uh, a lot of gaps we saw this morning. Now, uh, sh shortly uh, around midday, a bit after midday, we have the uh, Kaizen manufacturing data coming out in China, uh, we would think that based on what we saw on Saturday that's going to be horrible as well, but uh, that's just an assumption by me, we'll have to see how that data comes out. So just keep an eye on the Aussie if it does come out you know, really uh, much lower than expected, it could have a bit of a negative impact on the Australian dollar, it could also have a small negative impact on the uh, ASX 200 as well. And um, So a lot of eyes will be looking at China now. Um, the toll that it's taking on the country and how that's going to affect a lot of businesses around the world that revolve around Chinese factories uh, to operate and uh, stay in business basically. Um, there's been a lot of uh, hardship in China with local restaurants, uh, local rest Chinese restaurants in uh, certain communities around the world including Melbourne where we're from where things are just extremely tough uh, and uh, business is down. So uh, keep an eye on that one when it comes out and then uh, yeah we'll look forward to uh, this afternoon, well this evening's European session and US session. So until tomorrow's report, good trading, uh, enjoy, have a wonderful day and bye for now.